Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, episode in the Boost Your Fertility with Sally Varley. And today, my special guest is the lovely Christy Nichol, all the way from Nelson, BC, in Canada. And Christy, I've known for quite a few years now because um, she was actually one of my teachers in anatomy uh, when I was studying acupuncture. And um, we've just kind of somehow kept in touch online. And um, Christy used to be an athletic therapist, but she is now, um, she's created something called the Burnt Out to Blissed Out Formula. And um, so she's working with professional women who are feeling burnt out and um, need some help to kind of get themselves back together. And I was listening to Christy's podcast not very long ago, and she was talking about something called a crap list. And um, I think we could all agree that 2020, there were a lot of things on a crap list. <laughs> um, and it hasn't really stopped yet. But um, I, I wanted Christy to come along and tell us what this crap list is and how it can help us. Um, it's particularly relevant if you're trying to conceive because as you already will know, stress is just one of the biggest obstacles to conceiving. And so in my mind, anything we can do to help bring those stress levels down is gonna really help. So welcome, Christy, it's so nice to see you. And um, thanks for coming on and yeah, Tell us what what is the crap list that I'm talking about? Totally. So first of all, thank you so much for having me here and to share with your audience about about stress and its impacts uh, and how we can shift and change that and, and move out of it so that we can feel a lot less burnt out. And absolutely, just what you said, like 2020 was really crazy for a lot of people. And many people haven't even come out of that. And they're starting out 2021 already feeling like they have a whole lot of crap, C-R-A-P, on their plate and, and feeling that sense of burnout. So I'm just so grateful to be able to share a tool that they can use to move the ball down the court and get out of that stress cycle, um, especially if you're trying to conceive. So I can really like, yeah, feel that benefit. Yeah. So if you'd love, I can dive right in. Yeah, like, let's go for it. Before, okay, let's get to the crap. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> okay. So the truth of the matter is we're all really good at writing to-do lists. A lot of us have to-do lists. We're trying to check things off. And it's that constant cycle of trying to cross things off our list that leads us to believe that we're not moving further ahead or that we're so overwhelmed. Um, and, and there's just so much to do. And we feel tired and we feel burnt out and we feel exhausted. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it's not so much the to do's on our list that are the exhausting part or the overwhelming part. It's what's underneath those to do's, right? Because every time you cross off something off your list, inevitably, it's like time, like a vacuum is going to fill back in again, right? So a to do list is really, truly never going to go away. But what's on that list that's creating the overwhelm is actually what we call the crap. And that is your concerns resentments, anxieties, and procrastinations. So C-R-A-P, yeah. I'll say it one more time, your concerns, your resentments, your anxieties or things you're apprehensive about and the things you're procrastinating. That's truly what's creating the overwhelm, sense of overwhelm uh, and the sense of burnout and futility versus the actual to-dos on the list. Um, so can I dive more into that and just... Sure yeah, tell us, because tell, it this was the thing that really spoke to me when I heard the podcast was how, well, I know you'll explain a bit more in a minute, but um, I thought, yeah, it's so true that we sometimes we just, we put things on our list, but you can just go on and on and on and you never end. And, and you, yeah, it, it but I think you're right what you're saying about how actually the things that are stressing us there's a sort of subtext isn't there there's a layer beneath and that's what we want to get to so tell us how do we sort of figure out what's the underneath what that's all about yeah yeah so for example um you see so you write your to-do list everything that you have to to do 
Okay. Or, and you have a situation perhaps at work that's challenging or a coworker who's challenging you or or a a family member, a spouse, it it could be any number of people in your circle or in your, even now in your bubble, um, (laughs) right. That are creating a higher level of stress and anxiety uh, for you. So for example, you've got all your to do's. I've got a call the doctor. I've got to do this. Well, okay. Let's say call the doctor. Let's just keep it super simple. Mm-hmm. I have to call the doctor, but the concern I have is that there's going to be something wrong. I feel concerned about, I'm going to get bad news. I feel concerned about, um, this thing that I have to resolve is going to be harder than I thought it was going to be. So those are the levels of concern that we're feeling that they're, they're always there. They're always there. But most of the time when we're feeling overwhelmed and anxious, it's because we're not giving them a voice. Yeah. And so it's that we have to give it a voice so that we can now look at, is this really true? And is this something that I can deal with in a different way? Mm-hmm. But until I put it on a piece of paper and recognize what's actually happening, uh, I can't deal with that. And I just feel overwhelmed and anxious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then let's go. So that's the concern, the resentment, the R. Perhaps you had a situation um, at work, right, where things didn't go the way you expected. Um, things are going your way, or perhaps a colleague or a coworker has, um, in your perception, has um, maybe stepped on your toes or taken credit for your work or something like that. So there's resentment. There's, there's the truth of how you actually feel. So even if a situation has been resolved, it doesn't mean you don't actually have a feeling that goes with it. Mm-hmm. I feel resentful at this person who... Um, who took credit for my work. I feel resentful towards myself that I didn't stand up for myself. Mm-hmm. All of those different things can, can be building in your energetic system, in your body. They're called feelings. We all know about feelings. <laughs> and, and feelings, believe it or not, are as much as we like to believe that we are um, kind of physical beings with emotions, we are truly emotional beings that sometimes think. And that's really the truth. Yeah. And things happen on a physical, physiological yeah. level. Yeah. And as, as you will have known from your work at the Chinese Medicine Academy, that, you know, Chinese medicine is all about the interconnection of feelings and emotions and, you know, your mental, emotional body and your physical body and both affect the other. So, um, yeah, this is, you know, I, I see... Well, a classic example is people being worried and then they can't sleep. They're worried yeah. about something. So, um, yeah, stuff manifests either way, doesn't it? It so does on every level. That worry, that emotion or energy, an emotion of worry is impacting the physiological system, increasing cortisol and preventing the sleep cycle from happening. So we have to... We don't have, well, we don't, you don't have to, but it's helpful to acknowledge that, and, and the truth of it, that feelings truly are biochemicals. Mm-hmm. Take, for example, if you feel embarrassed and your face goes red, mm-hmm. it's a biochemical reaction happening in your body. It's every emotion itself has a chemical configuration mm-hmm. and that floats around in your bloodstream and in your body and it affects all your different organ systems. Um, and before I'll move on to the, the second half of the crap, um, but to say that, you know, in working with bodies and people and injuries in my, in my former life as an athletic therapist, uh, it was those that weren't getting better when they ought to with the right exercise or the right thing that I was, you know, giving. And that was like, why isn't this thing getting better yet? And it was the truth of the matter was the stress cycle was preventing the body from healing appropriately. Interesting. And I would imagine for you, the stress cycle with the, with the women that you work with is preventing the body from conceiving. I can only imagine, not my area of expertise, but I would imagine that's the case. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're, um, you know, so many of us these days are in what we call the fight or flight response, which is when there's too much of the stress hormone floating around. And um and this is what acupuncture does is bring people into the rest and digest phase when all the things like digestion and you know the nutrients are going into your body and it's repairing itself and that means that then there's energy left over for your reproductive system to work properly but if you're um you know if you're just stressed out all the time 
everything's inflamed and it it can't your body's not our bodies are so clever because they just want to keep us alive so they're not going to help you make a baby if it thinks this person needs to run away at any minute <laughs> you know from whatever the threat is so um yeah that's that's one of the ways that stress gets in the way of of fertility okay and so i can only ma- thank you for sharing that because that makes total sense mm-hmm. to me um but it's hear you language that in that specific way why it's so important to get this crap mm-hmm. out of your brain and body and onto this paper so that you can tackle what's on on truly on the yeah. list um so no, let's go to, yeah yeah sorry to interrupt but when you're just talking about the concerns bit i mean i have had um a leak in my well a few leaks in my house roof for a couple of years and there's like watermarks on the ceiling that are appearing and this has just been stressing me all this time and I kept thinking I must sort it I must sort it I must sort it and the reason I didn't was because I don't have very good experience of you know ringing up tradespeople, and then I'm worried that I'm going to get ripped off or that you know, they're just going to go up there and they're not even going to do anything and charge me loads of money for it. And I finally um, managed to get two different quotes before Christmas. This was literally the week before Christmas. Yeah. And um, one of them was literally like three times or four times what the other one was. So I, I went with the cheaper one. And then he turned up <laughs> later that day when I said, oh, yeah, I can, you know, I'm good. I'd like to book you. He just turned up because it was a nice day. And then the job was done by the end of that week. And then we've had like the worst weather since then. So much rain. And I'm just can lie in bed now and hear the rain coming down outside. And I'm not panicking, thinking, oh, God, is this going to be the time that it actually comes through <laughs> or you know, how am I going to sort it? So uh, I've, I've had very recent experience of like, just kind of recognizing what was stopping me from moving forward. And I know you'll, you'll get onto the, um, the P part in a minute. Yes. Um, yes. The procrastination. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Let's yeah. like, like that has such a beautiful example of exactly that. Yeah. I took two years I, I spent a lot of time and energy and effort avoiding a situation, not because the task on the list, the roof, the, let's just imagine this to-do list. Everyone imagine your to-do list and imagine putting fixed roof on it for 365 days times two. <laughs> okay. So that's like 730 days, I think. Yeah. So imagine 730 days of concern yeah. about a thing. And then once you actually write fixed roof, and then underneath it, right, I'm concerned that I'm going to be overquoted on it. I'm concerned that it's not going to be done well. And you get that all out on the piece of paper. And you also write, I'm procrastinating for 720 days now. Yeah. <laughs> now you feel more empowered to take action. You, mm-hmm. feel, you, you really feel a lot more empowered to take action because you can look at sometimes the silliness of what you have written mm-hmm. or sometimes the pain of what you have written. And then when you see the pain of what that is, then you can use a tool to address that. Mm-hmm. And then you can move forward. And then in addressing it, you feel more empowered. You're more peaceful sleeping at night now because you've dealt with that situation that was creating prolonged stress in your system. Mm-hmm. And you, as you do more and more and more of that, you start to feel more empowered to, to, to accomplish more and tackle different things. And then you get a sense of overall achievement generally speaking does that make sense yeah definitely I mean because I could feel the weight lifting I mean that's it's quite a big job that was happening but I could imagine that even sometimes some small things like putting off a phone call or like you said making that doctor's appointment I'm you know being in the health world I'm quite interested in you know sometimes when you hear about people who um you know, might get a a serious diagnosis of something and then you find out that they had symptoms for months or years and they just didn't do anything about it. And you think, how could you, why did you let it go for so long? But 
I don't know. It's it's some you know, and some people are down at the doctors at the first tickly cough that they get, you know. But it's um, yeah, it it seems nonsensical, but when you describe it in this way with the crap list, that uh, you understand why. When you really pick it apart, it it is quite clear why we shy away sometimes from things that would make our life a lot better to resolve but we just yes. think oh well, I'll just pretend it's not there and I'll do it tomorrow it's, not, the, the, it's like um the pain isn't bad enough yeah right um except and then but the the, the downside to that is that it it's wearing you down on a it's like it's like a slow drip kind of like your roof was <laughs> like yeah. a slow drip of pain which gets exhausting mm -hmm. after a while and so if you're in that place of feeling burnt out you're feeling exhausted um the true definition of burnout is emotional exhaustion um deep personalization so that idea of starting to lack empathy and compassion because you're just so tired of, mm -hmm. of of giving it um and a decreased sense of accomplishment so those are truly the three key s signs of burnout right um that really are showing you that it's in your best interest to take some action mm -hmm. to make a shift out of that. But it can feel scary because yeah. of our concerns, our anxieties, our resentments. Sometimes we're stuck in that cycle of resentment and we're so f hooked in the cycle of resenting, not that we want to be, but that we don't know how to find a different way. Mm -hmm. And we're just cycling that in our brain and then that cycling in our body Mm -hmm. that it, it almost stops us in our tracks from taking action. We're just so mm -hmm. focused on feeling resentful versus focused on yeah better. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a bit more about the procrastination part. Is that, are we writing down the thing that we're procrastinating on or why we're procrastinating on it? I'm going to suggest you do both. So mm -hmm. the P, the procrastination. Yeah. I am procrastinating. So for example, if you are, but in this type of a business world, small business owner, and there's certain things that you need to be doing and like showing up and having a conversation like this, and you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. So if you write that down on your list and it shows up three weeks in a row, so three weeks in a row, mm -hmm. now you want to start writing what's underneath that. Right. Because either it has to go, it's not important. And so you might as well not waste your energy putting it back on your list again. Mm-hmm. You, or you need to delegate it off to somebody else to get someone else to do it. So you either have to do it, delegate it, or dump it. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that you actually have to be the doer of, not delegate or dump, then if you keep putting it back on and you're not doing it, now you need to look at what's underneath that. Right. Right. Yeah. Why am I procrastinating? Okay. I'm afraid. I think then you go through the emotional piece of that. And then once you have the emotion, then you can take action. Mm -hmm. so are these um when people are writing their list do you suggest that they have like a book that they write it in so that they can refer back to what they wrote last week or yesterday or yes so I'll give you this one last piece I know we don't want to um go on super long because you're already all overwhelmed and don't have a lot of time to listen <laughs> and we got to get this off your list um, and so if you want to supercharge your crap list, so just writing it and going through this process of to-dos plus the crap, concerns, resentments, anxieties, procrastinations, that's even just doing that will help a ton. Mm -hmm. but if you want to supercharge your list, there's two ways you can supercharge it. Number one, keep the list for at least a week, the same list and just add to it instead of throwing it away. Mm -hmm. And then if it's okay to show a kind of a body tool to go with that, I, I'd love to show your audience. Yeah, how they can do it. Right. Cause we said emotions are happening in the body and yeah. not just in the brain. Yeah. So we can calm our body down um, using acupressure points on the face and the body um, called tapping. And we just tap like this. You can all follow along with me. You tap like on the inside of your eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Perfect. On the side of your eye. And you tap under your eye and you tap under your nose mm -hmm. and you tap on your chin and then your collarbone where it meets your clavicle or your sternum, yeah. breastbone, <laughs> and then your clavicle where it meets your breastbone. And yeah. then 
We say under the arm, but I'm going to skip that one and just go straight to the top of the head because that's just easy in this moment. Yeah. Okay. All of these points link back to um, scientifically, it's been shown to decrease cortisol in your system, uh, which is that inflammatory molecule mm -hmm. and calm your amygdala at your hind brain. So part of the brain of that fight, flight or freeze response where that kicks off. Mm -hmm. And as you're looking at all of those concerns, resentments, anxieties, and procrastination, you're also getting a calming signal at the same time. Ooh. And what that does is it redirects blood flow back to your prefrontal cortex. So now you can be more thoughtful mm -hmm. and resourceful in the moment about what you might choose to do differently going forward. Mm -hmm. And just a word to people watching about the prefrontal cortex. So this is the part of your brain that's responsible for decision making and judgments and social interactions and it actually shrinks when we're under prolonged stress so that's why you can't focus you get brain fog you can't cope with little things that upset your day stuff like that so it, it's again like i'm always going on about this but i can't stress how important it is to work on the stress levels like use all these tools they might feel silly or like it's not going to work or whatever but try to be open-minded to it because there's science behind all these things you know and especially with Chinese medicine and um and tapping on the acupressure point you know the, this has got thousands of years of evidence behind it that it works so um and you know tapping your face and your head and your body is free and it's easy and you can do it anywhere so um it's gonna it's really gonna help so can you do that should you do that routine on both sides or oh so qu super quick um you can do one side you can do both sides at the same time you can switch hands it's yeah. a very forgiving process um if you have shoulder pain or an injury then go on the side that's comfortable yeah um, but both work and you'll find you'll be intuitive or there's a way that feels more natural to you. Mm -hmm. See how easy I've done it a few times. It's like, do, 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 do. Yeah. And just to um, give context to it. Cause I know you're like, what is this weird thing there? As a, a coach of mine said, wor who works with um, professional athletes, football players, they call it banging on their head, but they get extraordinary results in terms of their performance. Um, so it's a technique that's widely used in mind body technology Whilst it may seem quote unquote silly or stranger woo woo, it actually truly has a, a ton of science that yeah. demonstrates how it does lower our cortisol and helps that prefrontal cortex yeah. make, as you say, decisions, yeah. refocus. And who wants to have that part of our brain shrunk down, right? Yeah. We, need that. we need that more than ever right now. Exactly. And need to be able to just, like we were saying before we hit record that you know, because there's just so many unexpected things that keep happening and um, that we we need to have this ability to just stay calm, you know, that we, we're not out the woods yet. Things are still very unsettled and uncertain. And so when we feel steady in ourselves, that's when we know we've got the strength to keep going through the challenges that life's throwing at us and that we can do it. And sometimes... Um, you know that's best done with the support of somebody like me or somebody like Christy um and she works online so um I'll, I'll be making sure that your your website address um is on the description but just tell us now what's your what's your website called and you you've got a freebie haven't you sure so um christynickel.com is the website and I, that'll, I'm sure, be posted somewhere if you yeah. don't know how to spell it. Yeah. Um, and then I have a, a freebie for you. So five mistakes that lead to burnout so that savvy women make and what you can do instead. And the link to that, I'll try to talk it out, but you'll probably want to post it. <laughs> so it's one of those bit.ly forward slash five mistakes freebie. So B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash the number five mistakes freebie okay cool okay. um and just to finish um one last thing as a, as a ray of hope in something that you just said to leave your audience with and the value of working with you in moving forward out of that stress stress cycle is that a stressor doesn't need to go away aka covid mm -hmm. in order for the stress cycle to complete so I really need, I want to say that one more time, the stressor 
or that thing at work, COVID, or leaky roof, whatever. The, 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 the stressor does not need to go away in order for the stress cycle to complete. Yeah. And we can complete it through acupressure, acupuncture, yeah. tapping, all these scientifically researched tools, laughter, um, um, well, it's like escaping my mind, getting a, a hug even. Mm-hmm. Those are things that actually can help us complete the stress cycle, yeah. even though the stressor hasn't gone away. Yeah. Um, you've you. reminded me actually, because I'll never forget a client that um, it was a man actually, and I don't work that much with men, but anyway, this guy came because he was very stressed at work. He was finding that he was really shouting at his kids a lot and feeling quite angry a lot of the time. And he said, I've got this one particular colleague who just pushes all my buttons and I can't, I can hardly be in the room with this guy. Like he just really winds me up. And the next time he came for a treatment, he said, I went on a training course with this guy (laughs) and he said, "It, I just, he doesn't bother me anymore. And he's like, he's exactly the same, but somehow my reception of him has changed and I'm just can let it all you know pass over me and um and I hear that so many times when people you know have acupuncture or just have somebody to talk to who can coach them in the right way because obviously in this current climate we can't always physically be in the same space but I think um again sometimes like you were saying you can ask yourself about a concern is this true and you can also ask somebody else, you know, yes. sometimes just talking it through with somebody, you realize how silly it sounds or how reasonable it sounds that, yeah, of course you're worried about that. And then what can we do to resolve it? And all of those things, I think, just make people feel a lot calmer, don't they, about being able to manage a situation. Yes. So yes. I can tell I'm going to get you back in here for some more. <laughs> In so fun. Fun. I would love that. I'm gonna be constantly <laughs> messaging you saying come and talk about something else now <laughs> so thanks so much that was really fascinating and um I'm I hope everybody watching gets a lot from it I'm sure they will and I'm gonna go away and write my crap list soon so um <laughs> Yeah, I've got a few more things, big ones that have been flows. Now you said that was on my list for 730 days. I'm thinking that's embarrassing. <laughs> but not, but, but let's just say and no and not. Like you're definitely not alone. Yeah. You, I've done it, you've done it, yeah. we've all done it, and we don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. thanks yeah. so much, Christy. Speak. Okay, you're so welcome. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Bye. Bye.